Hey everybody, I uh, hope everyone is doing well today. It's been a minute since I've been on here, so I'm just gonna jump right in here with what's on my heart. Um, riding back from church today, um, was, you know, just having a conversation with uh, my daughter who was sitting beside me. Um, she brought up such a precious analogy and it just really sunk in with me. Now, if you know me, you know that analogies are just my thing. It is how I get my point across. And this one was just so profound. And out of the mouth of babes, they say, um, it just really, even for me, it put this um, message just in a totally different light. So, I don't know if many of you uh, do video games because I have raised three children and two of them are still teenagers. I have a lot of experience with video games and computer games that are out there. And so my little girl has a game called The Sims. Now you may have heard of it. You may still play it. <laughs> it's a very complex game as a matter of fact. And in this game, you build families, you build people, you design the people. So here's what she was telling me. She's like, Mom, it's like my Sims game. I design these people. I design every teeny tiny detail about them. Their personalities, uh, the shape of their face, the shape of their eyes, their nose, their hair, the way their hair grows and is styled. I uh, shape everything about how they act. Because I've built them, I know exactly what they're supposed to do. I have a plan for them and I know what they're supposed to do. She said, in the game, there's little things that even tell me what they need to be the most productive. Um, so as a very simplistic example, she said, you know, I have a, a little bar that shows me when they need to go to the bathroom, it shows me and it's like a timer. And if the Sims are in the game and they're moving about and the person is doing this and doing that and they're not going to the bathroom, even though they know they should, they're putting other priorities that they want to do ahead of it. She said, time will run out. And if time runs out, they actually will wet themselves. <laughs> she said, so you have to try to get them to do what they're supposed to do. And, um, so I was thinking about it. She said, Mom, you don't understand. They're so stubborn sometimes. She said, I can take a chair or something and put it in front of them. Let's just say they want to go to the kitchen and get something to eat instead of going to the bathroom. She said, I'll take a chair and try to block their path and put this obstacle in their way. Yet they will still sometimes find a way around it so that they don't have to go do what they're supposed to do. She said, and sure enough, they will pee all over themselves. <laughs> And this just really sunk in with me. This is so simple. This is such a basic representation of our lives and um, comparing it, obviously, is over simplistic comparison of our relationship with God. But He made us, He designed us, He knows what we need every minute of every day. Now, we get it in our heads all the time that we know what we need or that we want this or we want that. And that's of so much importance that whatever it is God's telling us to do, we will often put it to the side. We can't see the timer that's running out, but God can. He can see the timer running out. He can see what's about to happen if we don't do what he tells us to do. I've heard people say, well, I know God wants me to do this or that, but I'm not ready or it's not what I want. Well, you know, we are not put here to please ourselves. We're put here to please God. So what he wants for our lives is how we're designed. Every little teeny part of our body is designed to follow the path that he set before us. So when you are constantly trying to do something that's not what God's telling you to do, you're not following his path. So just like my daughter used in her example, sometimes God will place obstacles 
in your way to try to force you to turn around and go back and do what he wants you to do or to make you move over into the direction that he wants you to be. People don't understand sometimes, why, why is this happening to me? Why do I have this obstacle? Why can't things run smoothly? Well, there's your answer. It's so simple. God's putting speed bumps in the road to slow you down. He's putting obstacles in your path to force you to turn and do what he wants you to do. It's just so simple and it just amazes me when I think about it in, in such a simplistic manner. In Jeremiah 29, 11, the verse that we've all seen, we've all heard, you see it printed on things, you see it at Hobby Lobby printed on things, but really, really think about it. Read it and read it carefully and think about it. For I know the plans I have for you. God is telling you right there, you are special to me. I've already planned out your life. I've already planned out what you're going to do. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. All this time that we put off what God wants us to do, we're putting off prosperity. God's plans are to prosper us, not harm us. The plans of the world, that is only designed to harm us. So every time you put off God in favor of something that the world wants, you're passing up on your prosperity. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. It's just so beautiful when you break it down into something so simple. God has your future planned for you, a prosperous future. He wants you to have hope and he wants you to enjoy these plans that he has for you. It's so easy. We just have to listen. Just allow the Holy Spirit to come in and guide us and stop putting what God wants on hold for what the world wants. Every minute that you're not abiding by God's plan for your life, you are losing prosperity and you are losing your hope for a better future. And that is our thought for today.